Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that, to be totally honest, the church has dropped the ball on. Um, we are called to a certain standard uh, by our faith. Um, the essentials of Christianity from its inception were words from Jesus like, love, love those who hate for you, pray for those who persecute you, love your neighbor as yourself, love your enemy. And these are powerful words, and it's words that really marked the next few hundred years within the early inception of Christianity, because Christianity really revolutionized the marginalized by doing things like giving them a voice. In fact, there are some early texts from the first and, sorry, rather the second and third centuries that refer very mockingly to Christianity as the religion of women and slaves because of the position that it gave to those individuals within antiquity who really had no autonomy, who weren't considered persons. And the idea of being created in the image of God gave them value. Even, we can go to the Old Testament, we can go right back to ancient Judaism, we don't, we don't have to go to Jesus, because the idea of being created in the image of God is exceptionally unique when we look at the ancient worldviews of the ancient Near East. Uh, particularly if we look at origin and creation stories within other worldviews. Because in the ancient world, there was almost a unanimous acceptance that we here are due to a cosmic mistake. Um, a specific example of this would be the Babylonian origin story, um, which is uh, called the Enuma Elish. And the Enuma Elish tells the story of a, a grand battle between the gods and the gods who lost ended up being what we are made out of. But ultimately, it was a mistake or a cosmic accident. Um, it's not that ancient of an idea. Lots of atheists nowadays would also echo that fact. But Judaism was unique in the sense that it said, not only are you not a mistake, but you're created good, and you're created both male and female in the image of God. And that was exceptionally unique, both in ancient culture, and in Jesus' day, if we look at the Roman and Greek religion of his day. And it gave agency to a lot of these marginalized groups. And when we're talking about marginalized groups in our society, I think we need to look at the early church and how they treated individuals who disagreed with them with respect, and we need to mirror that much more. And I'm genuinely saddened by a lot of the reaction that that the, the church has had in the not so distant past in the way that they treated certain individuals in regards to sexual orientation and a number of other, other issues. We have not treated people fairly. Now, like I said before, love does not mean agreement, but that gives us no right to treat them in any other way. Like my um, airplane illusion, when we start to look down on other people, we imply that we are saved due to something of our own accord, and that's not true within Christianity. And so everyone is created in the image of God, and we need to treat others like that. Martin Luther said that we are starving beggars leading other starving beggars to the food. And that's, I think, really how we need to treat our faith and how we need to interact with other people.